Welcome everyone to the REA presidential address. Um, in a little while, there will be a formal yet short presidential address. But first at this midpoint in our annual gathering, I wanna welcome our co-chairs, Wanda and Dory, to guide you in a reflective pause amidst all of the thinking, talking, listening, theorizing, connecting, and constructing that we're doing related to the conference theme. So I will um, hand it over to Wanda and Dory. Hello everyone. It's good to see you again. This week we've been gathering around our central call that was circulated many, many months ago. And that was this, the world is on fire. We know it in our bones and feel it in our hearts. Science, sociology, and other disciplines describe the dire scenarios as oceans rise, cities warm, and species decline. We know humanity's most vulnerable populations will suffer most severely, and indeed are suffering most severely. These challenging times demand our attention as people who help form people in the ways of spirituality, spirituality and religion inside and outside of institutions. We're coming together this week again and again on these Zoom calls to consider how to mitigate harm when possible, how to inspire people to create new rituals of grief and lament, and how to stir human creativity on behalf of all beings. As we turn to each other in a few moments to share how the questions of this gathering are settling in our bodies, minds, and souls, I want you to be invited into these words by Bayo Akumalafe, a Nigerian writer and philosopher, a father, born into a Christian family, born into the Yoruba people, who reminded us during the pandemic that times are urgent. Let us slow down. He writes, I am quite confident that even as the oceans boil and the hurricanes beat violently against our once safe shores and the air sweats with the heat of impending doom and our fists protest the denial of climate justice, that there is a path to take that has nothing to do with victory or defeat a place we do not yet know the coordinates to, a question we do not yet know how to ask. The point of the departed arrow is not merely to pierce the bullseye and carry the trophy. The point of the arrow is to sing the wind and remake the world in the brevity of flight. There are things we must do, sayings we must say, thoughts we must think, that look nothing like the images of success that have so thoroughly possessed our visions of justice. May this time be remembered as the decade of the strange path, of the third way, of the broken binary, of the traversal disruption, the chirotic moment, the post-human movement for emancipation, the gift of disorientation, that opened up new places of power and of slow limbs. May this chime bring more than just solutions, more than just a future. May it bring words we don't know yet and temporalities we have not yet inhabited. May we be slower than speed could calculate and swifter than the pull of the gravity words can incarcerate. And may we be visited so thoroughly and met in wild places so overwhelmingly that we are left undone, ready for composting, ready for the impossible. Welcome to the era of the fugitive. Again, those words are by Bio Akumalafe and I'll put a link to them in the chat in case you would like to revisit them. After this morning's plenary, especially, they resonated with me and I wanted to share them with you as we move into this time of reflection. 
Wanda? So, yeah, we did want to take a moment or several moments actually at the end of this third day of our gathering to mark a pause and to remind you of something that was said earlier in our meeting that change happens at the pace of relationship. So in a moment, we're going to um, invite you into breakout sessions to continue to build community and listen for the wisdom that's been emerging as we've been gathering over these past few days. But first, um, I'm going to invite us into two minutes of reflection on these questions that Dory's going to post. I'll just give her a minute. So let's just take two minutes of quiet to think about what's bubbling up for you. What might be possible now because of an idea or a person that you've encountered here? And what question or questions do you carry into the remainder of this gathering? So take some time for some silent reflection and I'll call us back in a couple of minutes and then we'll head into um, our breakout rooms. take a few minutes um, now, um, either in the chat or that we have time for a few folks who might want to unmute and just share a little bit about what um, surfaced for you during your small group conversation, either something that someone said that really struck a chord for you or something that um, bubbled up for you that you want to share with a wider group. Um, so feel free to enter into the chat, or if someone would like to speak, um, please feel free to unmute and share briefly what emerged for you. Did anyone else feel like they were just getting started and they didn't really have enough time? I, I would agree with that. The 12 minutes pass quickly. <laughs> Well, I can share what bubbled up for me. Dory and I had actually had a conversation about this earlier today and then something totally different came up um, <clears throat> as we were in the reflection time was a line from this Wendell Berry poem of what we, what we need is here. And I was thinking of all the places that, that started to show up um, this week with Heber Brown talking about being seeing, kind of seeing his church lawn for the first time. Uh, the folks from our own deep wells talking about how, you know, the resources we have within um, are there, they're just often hidden or we don't always have access to that. Um, and then I was reminded in our conversation of the statement from Taylor Sit yesterday about we heal us. Um, so those are some, that's a thread um, that I've seen that has been bubbling. Well, I'll tell you, take your encouragement and not try to put it into a chat. Um, <clears throat> it has to do with bubbling up. Uh, in an earlier session, I reflected that for probably 20 or 25 years, the topic of literacy has been foremost in the uh, faculty of education at uh, the university that I teach at. And uh, it was central as everybody was certainly encouraged to take that into account in their lessons, preparation, course preparation, assignments, and so on, uh, namely reading, writing, speaking, and listening. It occurs to me now that uh, we're the world and ourselves are in such a situation that environment really ought to be a focus not just of individuals or some specialist within a our institutions, but it, it really needs to be a, an entire effort on the part of everybody doing something about it, no matter what their position is, uh, ranging all the way from those who care for the institution, the physical property and so on, uh, to those who are in philosophy, theology, education, medicine and so on. So environment, number one. <laughs> Thanks, Noel. 
Thank you, Noel. Yes, integration within everything. Anyone else? Something that's bubbling up for me after the, especially after the session this afternoon on writing collaboratively, um, I, I have a strong sense that the future is collaborative <laughs> and that as academicians and practitioners and even as Wanda and I went around went about planning this meeting. Collaboration was top of mind. And no one in the room is the smartest person in the room anymore, if that ever really was the fact. And um, the smartest person in the room is the room itself. The smartest person on the Zoom screen is the Zoom screen itself. And we need each other. And then the other thing that's just really settling with me um, is something that Tim Van Meter said this morning. The null curriculum, there, there are not hundreds of thousands of religious educators on this call, right? There's 39 of us, 36 of us. <laughs> um, there are a lot of us, this core group doing curricular adjustments, right? And tweaks to our to what we do to make space for the ecological concerns of climate justice and climate collapse. And it's gonna take a lot more than that because we are the null, the null curriculum. There are many other people who are doing a sort of religious education. And this reminds me of Catherine Turpin's work, right? Forming people for spiritual lives that are consumptive and lead to the dystopic future that we read so much about. So I'm I'm settling into what does it mean that we are outsourcing violence to our children's children and that we're actually doing that now, <laughs> that that is already happening. And to reverse that means an adjustment in our lifestyles that is beyond what we've adjusted for so far. So I think that this meeting is deepening me into an ecological conversion to use the words that Maureen O'Brien lifted up the other day. So thank you. Kimball, Kimball share, go ahead. Share in the chat. In my group, Joyce Mercer referred to an earlier presenter regarding how our social containers constrict what we can and can't know. And she started me musing about what I myself am not knowing even now. Well, I'm going to invite us to continue to be in this place of um, uncovering those things that we do not yet know, of continuing on this path of unknowing um, as we're walking this journey of figuring out how to best serve the well-being of our planet together. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Anne for the remainder of our presidential address. Thank you, Wanda. I, um, for those of you I've never met before, I am Ann Carter Walker, current and outgoing uh, president of the REA. Uh, I first wanna offer my sincere thanks to Wanda Stahl and Dory Baker for your creative, innovative, rich, visionary leadership for our 2024 annual meeting. Perhaps what I admire most about your leadership is what you demonstrate about an embodied commitment to a conference theme. This conference theme arises from a deep expression of vocation for both of you. I appreciate your commitment to the creation of an implicit curriculum of creation care in the development of this conference. From decreasing the REA's carbon footprint and attending to global equity by holding this conference online, to encouraging connections across the web of life and in our bodies through walk and talks, to inviting presenters and speakers across cultures, religions, and generations to help more fully elaborate a truly global perspective on creation care. In this sense, you are teaching while doing, and I am grateful. So during today's presidential address, I am not going to wax theoretical, theological, or religious educational to you. Um, there are a lot of fantastic folks doing that here already. Instead, in my second to final public act 
As president of this guild, I wanna offer some organizational guideposts for you. We have come through a significant time of change together. The guild has seen major governance changes. We've weathered a pandemic together, all the while as Dory and Wanda remind us, the earth is on fire. In the past three years of my leadership in the, in the guild, first as vice president and now as president, our conference themes has ha have had particular significance for a world on fire. First, past president Patrick Reyes invited us to consider how religious education might look back five generations and look five generations ahead to build a vision for becoming good ancestors. Then Karen Marie Eust invited us to consider the formation of the youngest among us in this world of change, extending this vision uh, of consider extending this vision uh, to the nurture of those who will inherit this earth. And now Dory and Wanda are helping us to build a vision for a kind of radical kinship with one another and with the more than human world that might contribute to the contribute to the healing of a burning planet. The through line here, as perhaps it has always been for the REA, to the best of our ability, um, is to be a part of the healing of a broken world through our shared commitment to the promise of religious education. When the world is on fire, it is hard not to huddle close to those who are most comforting to us, to find tried and true practices to help us maintain equilibrium, to grieve, to lament, and to search for assurances in an uncertain world. The REA holds your grief. I have grieved and continue to grieve too about the pain inflicted and the violence experienced even in our own spaces. And yet, if I have learned one thing as I have listened to the wisdom of the young and elder at this conference, it's that we must find hope. As one who is still here, even after my ancestors navigated forced migration, dislocation, starvation, and cultural genocide, I know that hope is a necessity. And so as the REA lives fully into a new season of governance, which will begin tonight as you elect your first president to fulfill the guild's revised governance commitments developed in 2019. And as we say goodbye to some of our REA staff who have given their all to this guild, I want to tell you where my hope resides. My hope resides in kinship. It is the kind of kinship that finds resonance in the fact that despite the vast differences that we bring to this interreligious global guild, we show up and wrestle with the most challenging questions about our world, about one another, and about our collective work. It is the kind of kinship that shows up in spaces to hear one another share stories of pain, pain that challenges core commitments and assumptions. It's the kind of kinship that recognizes that sometimes these stories are about us, about how we are contributing to a world, a guild, a community, a culture, a tribe, a nation, or a relationship on fire. It is the kind of kinship that shows up to provide love, support, navigation, and a listening ear as our colleagues um, and leaders of this guild make sacrifices for all of us. And so today, as I depart this role of president of the REA, I simply ask that you continue to find spaces for and hope in kinship. Remember your connections to one another. Cultivate spaces for the sharing of theory and theology, yes, but also spaces for direct communication, restorative practices, good governance, care, and gratitude. Leaders from the Global South and others who find yourselves unrepresented, continue to find refuge in one another. Continue to amplify one another's voices and work. Continue to ask hard questions about why things are the way they are and to offer the practical wisdom that has to date kept your people on this planet. And leaders from the Global Majority, 
and those who find themselves in positions of relative privilege. Practice good listening. Practice a critical eye to the structures that have facilitated your good fortune and a commitment to doing the public work of transformation. That's all I ask. Perhaps the most significant difficulty we have navigated as the REA board this year is how to respond to war and global conflict, especially when this conflict distorts our commitments to peace and human solidarity and challenges how we embody the mission of the REA. Tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Eastern, the board will host a special session dedicated to sharing stories about our experiences of the violence made by war. Indeed, this is the extended work of creation care. Using small group circle processes, we will simply listen to one another. The creation of spaces for the unearthing and sharing of pain are risky ones, we know. There will, there will be vulnerability even in a professional space such as this where competence reigns. Know that the REA board is committed to holding your grief and pain. It is the expression of our shared kinship that makes this possible, and I hope to see you there. I wanna conclude my remarks today with a few moments of recognition. First, I want you to see the embodiment of those who have been leading your guild this year. So. Give me one moment and I'll show you. So these are the people who have been leading your guild this year. This was a meeting we had uh, a week or two ago and we took a screenshot of our time together. So I just want to name what an incredibly rare thing it is in our world of academia and theological scholarship to be led by a truly global group of women. And to my colleagues, Hisung, Lakeisha, Patricia, Dory, Wanda, Chris, Joyce, Denise, and Esser, we did this together. So uh, I'm so grateful for each of you. So if you have a moment and you should happen to encounter one of these people in a breakout group, or um, in the chat, thank them um, because they're brilliant and cool and um, have done the work. Uh, and finally, we must offer thanks to those staff people who are departing their roles with the REA, Lakeisha Lockhart and Christine Hong. And so I wanna pause for a special moment of recognition for our friends. Hey, Chris, hey, Lakeisha. Thank you so much for pouring your heart and soul and good skills, your time and your energy uh, into the REA and into your work. To my play cousin, Lakeisha Lockhart, you have kept us connected in the midst of a global pandemic and has used the ways that we stay connected to grow the REA into a more robust international organization. I am super sad that Lakeisha is leaving. I have to start there. But I know that she's a key part of our field and that I will continue to learn from and with her. Lakeisha has shepherded REA through a very difficult time, COVID and beyond. She has done so with astute organizational skills, a warm and compassionate presence, and always, always, always with the creativity, joy, playfulness, and presence of a religious educator. Lakeisha, just want to say thank you uh, for all your leadership, pandemic, lean through org transition, uh, board development, um, and the new bylaw changes. I mean, you did everything. You did it with grace. You did it with that playful uh, joy and just grateful for your leadership at REA. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you. I'm grateful for it. You have been such a gift to REA. Very few people realize how much work it takes to keep REA running. And you've done this work with grace and good humor. 
every meeting with Tenseg has begun with your generous smile, and our work succeeds because of the enthusiasm with which you run with new ideas. Your light, your collaborative spirit, your insight, your just everything that you bring um, to anything that you do, anything I've ever seen you do has always been inspiring to me. You have given yourself time and again to so many people and not a lot of people see this. You have given yourself and it's been costly and I want to acknowledge that because you have been held together the association in so many ways. And so I want to thank you for that. Kisha's your dedication to supporting graduate students, including me, has truly paid the way for us. So your hard work over the years has had a positive impact on the entire REA community. I deeply appreciate the encouragement and solidarity you have shown to graduate students. You know that I admire you as a scholar and a practitioner, as a mama, as an activist in all the ways you show up, and as someone who's been taking care of the details for us. It's given me hope in the organization because you were willing to invest in it so much. I know from truly painful experience over decades that REA has a long way to go to achieve our stated mission and goals in relation to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Christine has been a leader in this most recent era, and I am deeply grateful for her commitment to restorative practices and her truly global presence in the field. Just want to thank you for your years of service at the Religious Education Association. Uh, you have been our first Jedi officer, but more than our first Jedi officer, you have really helped to shape the imagination, the work of Religious Education Association. To the first Jedi officer, I just want to say thank you for your leadership. It came in as a time on the back end of a lot of group um, board work um, with consultants and concern, and you brought life to what Jedi work should look like at uh, REA and a guild in a time when guilds are going through major transitions. So I just want to say thank you for all your leadership, Chris, uh, for everything that you do for REA and who you are in the world. Thank you, Chris Hong, for all that you have brought, the dedication, the detail orientation, the good sense, the common sense that you have brought to being our Jetty officer over these past few years. Thank you so much, Christine, for the vital work that you did as a part of the REA board and hopefully your work and your legacy will continue to bear fruit and help us move forward as an organization. Your work has enriched and benefited countless doctor students, ensuring their voices are heard and acknowledged. Your contributions are invaluable and I want to extend my sincere appreciation and my heart. Lakisha and Christine, thank you very much for uh, the passion, the wisdom, and the commitment that you brought into the life of the REA. The Religious Education Association is a much better and stronger organization because of your legacy. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Blessings to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great working with both of you. You've led us well. You are appreciated. So now I get to share my thanks. Lakeisha and Christine, collaborators, friends, and co-conspirators of mine. We have spent many, many nights on our couches, timing our connections with one another with the bedtimes of our children. We have strategized our navigation of this space with mutual recognition that this guild might not be ready for a team of multiracial women of color leading them. Lakeisha, you have literally birthed new relatives while doing the work of the REA. You are kind, joyful, prophetic, naturally organized and knowledgeable. In short, you are a superwoman. Chris, you have held fast to commitments for restoration and global wholeness in the face of forces that want those things in theory, but often in the midst of the discomfort that that practice brings, 
perhaps don't want them anymore. You have both done these things because of your belief that re religious education can change worlds. Thank you for the laughter, for tolerating my never ending stream of curse words and for the texts, the gifs and the love. I treasure the time we've shared. We give you back now to your children, your spouses, your extended families and communities. Thank you for all you have done for the REA. And now if you would all please um, turn on your cameras and unmute your um, mics and share in a collective whoop whoop for the good work <laughs> of Chris and Lakeisha. <laughs> well done. Oh, great to Thank see you. you. Thank you very much. It's the weirdest and most fun thing to do a collective whoop whoop on Zoom because you don't hear them all at the same time. You hear everyone's individual voices, which is actually in some ways even more lovely and comforting. So my final words to the REA and to the steering committee and to my friends, Chris and Lakeisha, are these from the musical Wicked. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn and we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them and we help them in return. Well, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know I'm who I am today because I knew you like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the word wood who can say if I've been changed for the better, but because I knew you, I have been changed for good. It well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart. And now whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. Like a ship blown from its mooring, mooring by a wind off the sea, like a seed dropped by a scarf skybird in a distant wood. Who can say if I've changed for the better? But because I knew you, because I knew you, I have been changed for good. And just to clear the air, I ask for forgiveness for the things I've done you blame me for. But then I guess we know there's blame to share and none of it seems to matter anymore. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes a sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? And I do believe I've been changed for the better. And because I knew you, because I knew you, Chris, and you, Lakeisha, I have been changed for good. Sorry, I didn't mean this to be a bath of tears. I love you all. I hope to see you uh, tear-free at um, our business meeting in two hours and nine minutes. Um, I'm grateful for you all. Love to you, and we'll see you again soon.